Hello. In this video, we're going to look at how to create an animated net for a 3D object. And I've chosen to use, make a 3D uh, pentagon, a pentagonal prism. But you can actually do this for a prism, a pyramid. It doesn't matter how many sides your base has. Um, but let's get started. So first of all, I would like to see my uh, grid lines because I'm, we may be using them later. All right. So I would like my pentagon to be somewhere around the origin. So I'm going to create two points. I just clicked on the point button here and I just put two points there. And I would like to create a pentagon. So, and I want it to be regular. So I'm going to click on the little arrow here and click the subcategory regular polygon. Then I'm going to make sure that those two points are on my pentagon. And since I want a pentagon, I'm going to click five and press OK. And so now I have a nice, wonderful pentagon that will serve as our base. I'm going to go ahead and right click this and check on show labels because I don't want to see words everywhere on my diagram. All right, great. So now we have the base and now we are ready to start seeing it in 3D. So we go to view and we click 3D graphics and we're going to split the screen. Uh, I forgot to warn you before though, um, if you are doing this, you want to make sure that you are using as much of your screen as possible because we do have to split the screen as we're doing right now. All right, so there is our pentagon. It is exactly where we put it. Um, this is our x-axis, this is our y-axis, and in order for us to see a third dimension, we need a z-axis. So that's a third axis right here, so we can give our pentagon some height. So now we can click on this little red arrow here, and we're going to extrude this to a prism. As I said before, you could also extrude it to a pyramid, but we're going to go ahead and extrude to a prism, and that just means we're going to stretch it out. All right, so I'm going to click on my pentagon, and I'm going to give it a height of four, and that's arbitrary. I don't want it too big, I don't want it too small, I want to see what's happening here, and then I press OK. So now again, there we have all these labels that we don't want to see, so I'm going to uncheck them. But for some reason, um, it is not, uh, it's not clear that they are showing, so I'm going to first press show label. And now I'm going to press on show, so check again, on show label. And now we have our wonderful pentagonal prism, and there are no labels. All right, so now I can click on the arrow once again, because I want to see the net. So now I can click on that and the net comes up. Okay, let's get rid of those words again. They're edges, so I'm gonna go ahead and right click here, show label, and then right click again, check on show label. All right, so let's take a look first on the left side of the screen. So I'm moving that over so we can look at the left side of the screen. I'm gonna click my arrow so we can see more of it. So I'm moving this over. All right, so this is the net of my pentagonal prism. So the original pentagon served as the bottom. And as you can see from each side, we have five rectangles stretching. And those are actually going to serve as the, um, the sides that come up. And you'll see that in just a second. And then this pentagon attached to one of the rectangles, doesn't matter which one, will serve as the top of the pentagon. Now, the reason I wanted you to draw this on the grid is because I, you might actually want to create this for yourself. So, you know, if you're creating this for yourself, you would have to construct perfect uh, lines, perfect pentagon, a perfect pentagon with perfectly equal sides and perfectly equal angles and, you know, all of that good stuff. But if you do this on a grid, you can actually approximate it pretty well. Um, it's a little hard to approximate points like this, no, nah, kind of like this, like this. It's hard to do it um, if it's not lying exactly on a point, but you can, you, between using a ruler and using the grid, you can create a pretty good net. So now you know the purpose of the grid. All right, so let's move this back over because we now have to see the fun part. All right. So I moved it with enough space so I could still see this slider. And this slider will allow us to open and close our net over the shapes. 
So let's go ahead. And as you can see, the rectangles are coming up and they are creating the side of the figure. And that pentagon is going to make a perfect lid for our figure. And I'm going to open it again. And look how beautiful that is. All right, so it's all well and good that we can see that movement, but it's so much better when it moves on its own. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to show animation. I'm going to turn the animation on. So now, hands free, it's doing it by itself, which is pretty awesome. All right, but I think it's doing it a little bit slower than I would like to see it do it. So I'm going to go up to number. I'm going to right click on number and I'm going to go to object properties and this should speed it up. Object properties opens. I want my speed to be five times as fast. This didn't work the last time, so I'm hoping it's going to work this time. Um, and I'm going to X out. And once I do, it's going a little bit faster, I think. Yes, it is. All right, so now it's pretty amazing. We have this thing here, and we can put it on our website if we want. Well, I'm going to jazz it up just a little bit before we, we share it with anyone. So I, like, I don't like the fact that the net and the figure are the same color. So I'm going to go ahead and change the shape of the, the color, sorry, of the net. I could not change the shape even if I wanted to. All right. So I'm looking for the net over here. And it's all the way at the top. I right click and go to Object Properties. And I'm going to go to Color. And let's make it black uh, for, for a little bit of contrast. Uh, let's make it a little bit more opaque. That looks good. Okay, cool. And then I'm going to close that. And so now there is quite a bit of contrast on our figure. All right. And I think we are good to go. Uh, so I can close out of this. And we can get a better look. And that is what our animated net looks like over our figure. All right, so in order to share this, you can do it in multiple ways. I'll just show you my favorite way, though. So let's say you're posting on a blog or on a website. You want your students to see what happens when the net is opened up and closed and so on and so forth. Go to File, and then you would Export. And you could export it as an animated GIF, so you can post it on a website, um, and it would be moving. I like to do mine as a dynamic worksheet as a web page. Um, and so it asks you for some stuff so you would fill it out um, let's call it animated net of a pentagonal prism and we don't need all of that stuff you can put it there if you want then upload and so it opens up a page here and in this page you can create yourself a GeoGebra account or sign in, or I'm just going to use Google. And I'm going to just allow it to know who I am. Maybe this is dangerous. I'm not sure. Hopefully not. Um, oh boy, I thought I did this before. Anyway, so I'm not going to go ahead and do that now because that's going to take too much of your time. But it will give you some HTML code, and then you are able to post that code anywhere that you feel free, that you want to. And then students will be able to see this animated GIF show up, and it's awesome. It's very impressive. All right, that's it for today. Have a great day.